Hello and welcome back everyone, this is Allura SC back at you with another Fortnite tutorial update video. In today's video, we will be covering our most hotly requested um, amplifier to be doing an update on and that is going to be the Devil North amplifier. This is our current build, this is accurate as of the 12th of Oct uh, of August, sorry. Yeah, this build is accurate as of 12th of August. This is our latest build so far. And this build has basically allowed me yeah, to uh, accomplish our latest uh, challenge, which was the solo four-player um, difficulty achievement challenge run. Yeah, so um, this build has basically... Um, serves me pretty well. I hope it serves you well as well. Yeah, it's not necessarily perfect, but uh, you know, it was good enough to uh, to tide me over, you know, for this challenge run. Okay, so very quickly guys, um, I'm actually going to highlight to you guys that this video is going to be a slightly longer one because you guys wanted an in-depth video. So, uh, you know, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to give every single one of these tiles as much justice as possible so you guys can actually find out and understand as to why all these tiles have been placed as such, why certain traps have been placed in certain areas as well as what traps were being placed where, how many impact, how many reload, all that amazing stuff. Okay, so uh, very quickly, let me just go ahead and highlight with the bird's eye view. We do have our wall off going off to the side over there. That's our first wall off. Number one, we have a little wall off over by the hill as well. All these have not really changed so far from our previous videos. That's going to highlight the wall offs first. So after that, we do have that little zigzaggy L-shaped wall off going off over there as well. And behind over there, I think this is a little addition that we have made as well because I was noticing that there were some little scuffages um, with the lobber, lobber? No, the flingers, sorry, walking around to the hillside. So we have also placed some tiles over there. I'll get into it when we do walk over there for a more close-up view. Okay, so that we have our spawn traps going on there as well. Um, we do have another uh, dart trap over there as our opened up scuff side hill has been um, made into a funnel as well. And in our previous videos, I did not actually account for the so-called rare spawn. And with our latest build, we do actually have a little um, build over here that will actually account for the rare spawn if it does spawn in. Okay, so we do have some funnels over there. We have a block off over there as well. And some blocking off going off to the side over there to ensure that husks do not try to punch through. Okay, so over here we do have more funnels underneath these. Um, they look like lobber shields, they aren't actually lobber shields. So let me just go ahead and jump very quickly and show you guys that there aren't actually any lobber shields going on right there. You see that little 2x3 area? That little 2x3 area is basically where the meteor rock actually falls. And you'll notice that I don't actually have any lobber shield going on over there, simply just the funnels itself, the roof up above. Okay, so these over here, these are actually to help rotate our husks. When they walk onto these floor launchers, they'll actually be launched onto the upper area, which is like what I like to call an elevated timeout room. Okay, we've also gone ahead and applied the same concept over here as well to be firing us across to this little bridge area here. Okay, so uh, main components wise, we do have funnels, block offs, spawn traps, funnels, block offs, as well as a extremely long, um, what do you call this, uh, floor launcher bridge, so to speak, coming along here. Okay, so if all that out of the way, guys, let's just get right into the explanation. Okay, so very quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this little uh, piece over here. All right, let's go ahead and delete this. And uh, yeah, let's uh, continue. So 
First things first, you guys might notice that my pickaxe is uh, of a lower quality. I actually went ahead and uh, um, downgraded my pickaxe because I was trying to use an outlander for our later solo runs. And uh, whenever I'm hitting my propanes, I find that I'm critting quite often and it causes me to blow up my propanes quite easily. So I went ahead and given myself a downgraded pickaxe. Anyway, not that uh, important. Let me actually go ahead and uh, remove the HUD uh, for the in-world indicators so that you guys can actually see a little bit more clearly. There we go. All right, so this is good. So first things first, we will cover the actual amplifier build, okay? So we're no longer using that very simple, regular amp build. You'll notice that right here, we do actually have a bunch of wall launchers <laughs> and a bunch of gas traps as well. Now, the reason why we have all of this stuff over here is basically to make sure that if any of the regular husks do leak through, that all of these wall launchers and gas traps will be able to take care of them well. All right, but uh, for the most part, most of you guys, all of these things over here really should not be necessary because I would be expecting you guys to be playing in a team of four. All right, I'm expecting you guys to be playing in a team of four. If you are intending on doing this solo as well, you certainly can. But do remember that if you are playing solo, more will be expected of you. Okay, you as a player are going to have to step it up in terms of your gameplay, all right? You're not going to have the entire base do all the work for you because Devil North is always a huge pain in the butt, all right? Very, very honest. Okay, so first things first, okay? This is where the amplifier is. We do actually have a door over here and a wall together with an upturned floor piece over here. These are what I would like to call anti-smasher floors. What do I mean by anti-smasher floors? Basically, if all these upturned floors like such, smashers will not actually charge. They will not actually charge you. As long as you are remaining behind all these tiles over here, they will not actually charge you. Okay? So most of the smashers, as they come up, they will walk all the way up here. And then as they walk here, then they'll, they'll walk straight into this area here and then they'll attempt to punch either this wall or they'll attempt to punch this wall over here. Alright, but if you guys are all doing your job well, they should not actually even reach the upper area in the first place. Okay, so first and foremost, what wall launchers are we using? This wall launcher over here is a 3 impact wall launcher. This wall launcher over here is a 4 impact wall launcher over here we do have our gas traps one two and three over here i do have a four impact wall launcher and this one over here i have a five impact wall launcher you will notice that with this five impact wall launcher i didn't actually give it durability as my sixth perk i actually gave it increased building health so let me just go ahead and show you guys what role I actually do have on this very specific wall launcher. 5 impact with increased building health. If you guys can't afford this wall launcher perfectly fine, go ahead and put your 4 impact. If you don't have a 4 impact, use a 3 impact as well. Not really that big of a deal, but if you guys want to be, you know, super uh, specific and specialized, then this would be what I would use. The reason being, if all of these three wall launchers happen to go off, let's say a smasher does sneak on by, all right? First one hits it, bang, okay, doesn't, uh, doesn't fly. Second one hits it, bang, still does not fly. When it comes to this one over here, this one is a five impact floor, uh, wall launcher, it is definitely going to send it flying. Now, the reason why we're also having this anti-smasher floor as well is because if the five impact wall launcher does go off, it's going to slide the husk across diagonally and they're going to end up out over here which is going to give you guys much more time to react and keep those smashers at bay using your trusty rocket launchers yeah you want to go ahead and use those to keep them pushed back into your floor launcher arenas over here okay so this is basically does it for this area right here anti-smasher three impact four impact 5 impact, 4 impact, 
and then gas traps up above over there. Okay, if you guys want to be uh, keeping it simple as well, you guys can certainly put down some of these floor launchers over here instead of all this stuff. But uh, that's entirely up to you. You guys want my build or what we have been doing with this particular base is what we have done here. Okay, so next thing, what have I done on this side over here? I really did not want has to be coming through on this center portion over here and as a result what i have done is i went ahead and did a very very massive sandwich of walls over here okay so i do have a floor piece over here i do have a cone over here as well a little pyramid piece all right so floor pyramid piece two pieces over here after that i do have wall wall and wall all right behind this wall i do have another little pyramid piece as well as another floor piece as well and another wall here wall here as well as wall here the reason why i'm having all of these walls is that i really 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 did not want us to be coming through on this portion center portion right here i wanted them to either go through on the right side or to go through on the left hand side instead it basically gives us one more tile of surface area to be working with and as a result i went ahead and just walled this entire portion right here very 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 hard okay so this covers it for the center portion the next thing that i would like to highlight as well is going to be off to this left side over here okay so this left side over here is where we have the so-called the scuffed um the scuffed stairs or the scuffed hill area so as we are heading off to this particular side over here this is where the stairs are i'm just going to highlight to you guys that i do in fact have broadside number one broadside number two as well as a gas trap up above okay this particular tile over here yes indeed actually is blocking the husk so if they ever do come from this side over here this tile as well as this tile as well as this tile over here like these three tiles are going to be likely to be attacked okay but what this allows you to do is that it basically allows you to stand over here and to use your rocket launcher to send them backwards it's gonna buy you guys some time all right smashers they tend to sometimes after getting stuck for a little while they'll just end up on top for huskies if you're lucky sometimes they just get stuck over here they'll get stuck for a while they'll stop and then they'll disappear okay but uh, that really depends on you and whether or not you know the husks are actually going to be uh, favoring you or not okay but uh, regardless this is how we've built them broadside broadside gas trap all right over here we do have a five impact floor launcher right here five impact floor launcher and over here i do have a four impact wall launcher okay so this wall launcher is actually going to be sending them across this side over here where we have a whole ton of stuff all right we have a door over here so what you guys will actually notice is that this door over here connects across to the other side as well now the reason why we have all these doors initially i had wall launchers over here and I realized that it was very poor mobility and very poor visibility. So with these doors over here, the husks are basically encouraged to try and punch this wall. And they're also going to try and encourage to be punching this wall as well. Because this wall over here is also laden up with a 5 impact wall launcher. Right, and all these along here all have tons of block offs as well. So, in terms of the Hus AI, they might be thinking, "Hey, this is the point of the weakest. Uh, this is the weakest link. This is the point of least resistance." So, they're actually going to try and hit on this wall. So, in terms of what you, as the player, would be doing, all right, you would generally be having one or two players. I think one player actually is more than sufficient. To be manning this area here you are going to be standing over here you're going to be using a freeze boy and you're going to be managing the husks that come from this side over here as they are coming in from this scuff path over here you are going to freeze them and allow the launchers to do their work if any one of them do come from here you can freeze them as well but honestly speaking if they do come from this side over here they will be pretty much dead all right 
Um, same thing on this side over here. You might want to put like two people over here. You want to stand on this portion here and stand on this portion over here. And then you just go ahead and make sure that the husks do not leave this area. You can freeze them in this little arena over here. All right. So um, let's uh, see, have I covered everything for the amplifier yet? Uh, five impact wall launcher over here. We have our door, we have the anti-smasher floor. We have another anti-smasher floor over here. We have a door, we have a upturned pyramid piece right here as well, and another smasher floor below that. Okay, upturned pyramid piece, anti-smasher floor behind that, and we have two wall launchers over here. Okay, so this basically covers it for the amplifier itself, okay? <laughs> this much explanation for a single amplifier uh, surrounding part, but uh, yeah, let's uh, not uh, stinge on any details, okay? Um, this particular portion over here, I've also uh, gone ahead and done something like this. Um, this basically is going to allow you guys to have a little uh, emergency exit. So let's just say, you know, this area down here becomes incredibly dangerous. If this area here is blocked or if there's a smasher over there and you need another spot to run away from, you can always head over to this side over here. You can just jump in and then you can go ahead and run across into this area down here and you will be safe from takers or anything that might be chasing you. Okay, that is also the same reason why as far as possible whenever we have these amplifier builds, you want to make sure that you also have lots and lots of doors for you to be able to run around and exit as and whenever needed. Alright, so with this amplifier part now done and explained, I am going to go ahead and head out to where the spawn is. Okay, we're going to go ahead and head out to where the spawn is, and then we can go ahead and cover everything else in there. Alright, so that's where the lava ball is going to be falling down. It does clip across to this particular edge over here. Alright, and this is where the husk spawns are. So where the husk spawns are. So let me just go ahead and cover all of our bases once again. Okay, we're going to start off with this particular block off right here. So take note, this little hill and this little spit of hill over here, you want to have one, two, three. Three of these tiles over here, tier three metal, blocking off this area here. All right, you also want to have a little pyramid piece, number one over here. Pyramid piece number one and behind or underneath that pyramid piece, you do also want to make sure that you also have a floor piece underneath as well. Alright, so let me just go ahead and reset this. There we go. So that's our pyramid piece. We have our floor piece. Okay, and behind that, we want to be having one, two, and three metal walls. Okay, so let's go and count again. One, two, three metal walls. I've placed two wall darts on this side over here so that they can catch some of the husks that are spawning in on that particular area right there. Okay, so if we are going to be using some points of reference, we do have an area of a three by one empty spots over here. It is not necessary for you guys to be putting any ceilings over here because, you know, the husks do not actually try to come here to fling, all right? So two by three every here that is going to be left open. Now, now that we've mentioned the three tile block off right there, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight as well. You have this particular area right here. This is a ziggity zag L shape one two and three and you're sealing this off entirely make sure you have this because you do not really really you really really do not want the flingers to be walking from here or the lobbers as well all right so with this particular part covered with the um the block off done all right let me go ahead and highlight one more block off that you guys are going to have to do okay so towards the back over here, previously where we had the spawn traps for the wall darts, you actually want to have this tile over here. See this tile over here that we're editing? This tile is going to prevent our um, flingers, yeah, basically going to prevent our flingers from trying to fling, uh, not fling, sorry, from trying to path around this area here. They will actually be very likely to try and path around this area here. They'll go all around here 
and then they'll walk all the way there past that side onto that little hill and then they'll stand up there and then they'll start flinging into your base and then all hell breaks loose. You really do not want that kind of thing happening so you really want to place this wall over here. Okay, so one blank wall and then behind that blank wall or not behind, uh, alongside those blank walls you're going to be having four of those dart traps just straight across there. Those dart traps are really just for some added additional damage. Okay, so another uh, point of reference as well, we're going to be having uh, two of these uh, two by one area here that's going to be left open, don't really need to be having anything over here. All right, and then you're going to be having this supporting piece over here. This is basically going to allow your uh, build to try and stay, um, you know, up. All right, you're just going to, to have this around just in case, you know, uh, some of the tiles do get scuffed. You want to make sure that it is anchored to a particular place where the husk will not actually spawn in and completely delete all of your spawn traps. All right, so supporting anchor over here and then we do have all of our gas traps okay so one gas trap two gas traps three gas traps and four gas traps that's where the lava ball is landing so one two three and four all right four gas traps right there after this we have gas traps for spawns as well we have one two three okay one two three across one two three again that's the second tile one two three so a total of a three by three area a three by three area over here that's going to be laden with gas traps after you have this three by three area you're then going to be having a two oh uh, sorry a two by two area right here all right a two by two area right here with these three being gas traps, okay? So this one over here is gonna be gas trap number one, gas trap number two, gas trap number three, and this one over here is forming yet another anchor as well. All right, so we have it anchored to two spots. Generally speaking, you know, if you really, really uh, are short for tiles and stuff like that, you may want to consider cutting one of these tiles over here. All right, in the interest of saving tiles. But either way, you know, just make sure that you are keeping all these spawn traps alive and safe because if they do break, you are in deep trouble. All right. So as mentioned over here, we have all of the gas traps that we talked about earlier. Spawns are going to be coming in on this side over here. Spawn, 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 spawn. All these areas here are spawns. Okay, spawn, spawn, spawn all over here as well. So over there, we had the two uh, dart traps. We are also going to be having one more dart trap over here as well. Okay, so uh, that's just basically going to be for some additional damage. This uh, dart trap over here is going to cover these three tiles over here and trigger and shoot across anything that might be coming that way. All right, so what other things shall we uh, cover right now? Let me uh, go ahead and talk about this one little dart trap over here. This is more of an additional damage kind of thing. You don't really need it. But if you want some additional damage, you can also do so. Because right now, previously, what we actually did have was a full block off over here. However, now we no longer have this area blocked off. We have, in fact, turned it into yet another funnel. We have turned it into yet another funnel. All right. Now, before I get into this particular portion over here, I am going to cover this upper area block off. So, as some of you guys might have mentioned previously, there is indeed a so called rare spawn that can happen on this area here. Okay. On this area here, there is a possibility for a so-called rare spawn. So what exactly do you want to do to ensure that this rare spawn does not, on the rare occasion, give you grief or give you problems, okay? So as they spawn in on this side over here, what we have done, in fact, is using this part as a point of reference, we have one wall off here, two wall offs here. Okay, two metal walls over here and that's it, two metal walls. All right, and then over here, we do in fact have a tile piece up here. This tile piece is actually quite important because if you are missing this tile piece, they might actually walk to the very edge over here and attempt to fling into your base. You don't want that happening. So two ceilings over here to ensure that if lobbers do spawn in over here, that they are going to walk very nicely into this area here that's going to kill them. Alright, so once again, we have one, two 
metal walls, Z, uh, Z, um, what do you call that, L shape it across, one, two. Okay, so a total of four walls all together. All right, and then up above we have two ceilings. And over here we do have another wall piece over here. All right, so this wall piece over here is basically just to prevent them from thinking that they are able to just land bridge their way across. All right, it's just sufficient resistance for them to be, hey, I don't want to come through here because there's an easier path for me to go through on that side over there to try and fling from that spot. All right, so this is how we have done it. Okay, so uh, this is for the scuffed uh, rare spawn over here. So we're moving downwards, this is where we have our spawn that happens on this side over here. How are we going to deal with them? So first and foremost, we have our spawn traps over here, which is nice and dandy. They are going to be walking up this area right here, walking, walking, walking. So first and foremost, they will be met with a wall launcher right here. Okay, they're going to be met with wall launcher number one right here as they are walking up from here. Okay, so some of them will be sent backwards with this wall launcher here. Okay, and then as they are going to be walking up further, as they walk up here, we are going to be greeting them with some broadsides, left and right side broadsides, followed by gas trap up above as well. Okay, as they are moving on to the next tile, the second tile over here, we do have a wall launcher off to the right side, slowing floor spikes down below, gas trap up above. These particular wall launcher is going to send them into a timeout room that is filled to the brim with wall um, broadsides on all three walls as well as a retractable floor spike as well. And you will notice that this particular area here is also where the so-called rare spawn will be falling down. So if they do fall down from here, they're going to drop here and they're going to be shredded by the triple broadsides as well as that retractable. If they somehow survive that and they walk onto this particular tile over here, they're going to get hit by that slowing trap as well as a wall launcher that's going to toss them right back through where they came from okay so moving on to the third tile over here we do have a gas trap one gas trap up above we have a wall launcher this is a triple impact so all of these wall launchers so far that have not been otherwise specified all have triple impact okay triple impact wall launchers we have a tar pit over here, and this is basically to make sure that anything that does survive this area here, they are all going to get stuck on this tar pit, and this is going to allow this wall launcher to send it across into this very amazing kill zone over here. Okay, I'm not going to uh, touch on them just uh, yet, but we're going to touch on first on this gas trap over here so if this particular part gets triggered and this wall launcher does send them across they're going to be sent about three tiles across this particular area right here okay so uh, maybe i'll just cover this uh, now since we are uh, actually uh, here this particular portion is actually above the lower funnels that we have going on the middle portion Alright, so what we have actually done over here is that we do in fact have a ton of floor launchers going on right here. Alright, so in terms of what floor launchers we actually have going on here, let me be very specific as to what kind of floor launchers we are actually going to be using. Okay, this floor launcher over here is a 4 impact floor launcher. Okay, in total, how many uh, floor launchers do we have up here? We have a total of six floor launchers here. Okay, six floor launchers over here. This one over here is a four impact floor launcher. This one over here is also another four impact floor launcher. All right, this particular area, this one over here is a four impact floor launcher. This one is a 5 impact floor launcher. This one over here as well is a 4 impact floor launcher and this one over here is a 5 impact floor launcher. Okay, so as to the reasonings why we have our floor launchers in this particular manner, let me go ahead and shed some insight as to why this particular setup. 
Okay, so first and foremost, you'll also notice that we do actually have some of these two third walls over here as well. Right, and uh, as I was uh, mentioning earlier as well, there's a little floor launcher arena over here. These floor launchers are not meant to kill the husks. They are actually meant to send the husks up above onto this area right here. They will land anywhere between this area. Some of them might even land somewhere across here as well, but due to the lack of tiles, I felt like it wasn't really getting enough traffic to warrant us putting another row of floor launches over there. Okay, so reasons why we have what we have. Okay, so first and foremost, most of the floor launches down below over there, the strongest floor launcher that we have going over there is a 4 impact that sends them up, and then we also have some 3 impact ones over there as well. Okay, so 4 impact floor launcher, when they do toss things up, these are the only ones that are going to be sending us up above, so I wanted to sync the cooldowns of these floor launchers to be matching the things that would actually send them up above. So let's just say floor launcher down below activates, it sends something up above. Alright, four impact floor launchers for me have a 5.6 second cooldown. Let me go ahead and show you guys how that actually looks like. Uh, 5.6, there we go. See, 5.6 second reload time, this is our four impact floor launchers. So when they send something up above, all right, they're going to end up somewhere about here and they are probably going to be staggering. So what happens is that this floor launch over here is probably going to go off and that's going to break their impact guard a little bit. Okay, if they are a regular husk or if they are husky, they might also be sent into the sky immediately. However, if they don't, this second tile over here is more than likely going to be able to do so, especially for huskies or regular husks. This one over here is a 4 impact floor launcher. So why do we not put a 5 impact floor launcher over here? The reason for that is because this area here is going to be a higher traffic. Because all of the husks that get sent onto this platform over here, they are all going to walk diagonally across or they're all going to walk across to this area here to try and go onto the bridge. So all of the husks will all try to walk onto this part over here and I wanted to make sure that this was going to be going off as much as possible. Hence, we are putting a 4 impact floor launcher over here. It may not do nearly as much damage as a 5 impact. 5 impact floor launchers do approximately 87 to 88% or even 90%. It's roughly around that area of uh, damage. Whereas a 4 impact floor launcher may only do approximately like 55% or so. Alright. So anyways, um, this, is uh, this is mostly just to, what do you call that, keep them CC'd. You basically just want to keep them occupied and in the sky, and if it is a smasher, if it gets hit by these two, they probably wouldn't fly just yet. So what happens after this? If they somehow manage to come through this floor launcher over here, they then get onto this tar pit over here, they get stuck, and this wall launcher is going to send them into a two-tile deep timeout room. As you can see, they are all outfitted with gas traps, three tiles of gas traps. I have completely left this entire area here open. You can put some slowing floor spikes or whatever you want really, or retractables as well with broadsides if you have the tile limit to do so. I have chosen to forego it because I felt like it was overkill. Not needed. So anything that was a regular husk, you know, if they got sent over here, they're probably going to be dead already anyway. All right, and if they were a smasher, you know, it doesn't really matter because if they are getting sent inside here, there is no reason for them to smash. Why? Because the target that they are trying to go towards is the amplifier. So they're simply just going to try and walk straight again. They're going to get stuck on this tar pit over here. They're going to get stuck on this tar pit over here. And then they're going to try and walk across this entire area of floor launches over here, which is definitely going to kill them very well. All right, so that's the reasoning and the way that we've actually built this upper area over here. Tar pit down below, wall uh, launcher off to the right, gas trap up above. Tar pit over there, wall launcher, as well as gas trap up above into a two tile deep timeout room with walls across and on besides, and no traps. 
apart from the gas up above. Okay, so this basically does it for this upper area right here and the connecting elevated timeout room that we have going on as well over here. All right, since we're talking about the upper area as well, let me just go ahead and highlight to you guys where exactly do we put our base. Okay, our base is actually going to be planted right here. As always, I have marked it with a tier 2 stone um, piece, stone floor piece. Right, so the reason why we want to put our base over here as well is because when you place the base over here, it makes this particular tile unpathable meaning the husks will avoid this particular tile. So they will actually not try to punch this wall down. They will not attempt to walk over here. They will not attempt to come through over here as well. I accidentally deleted my wall. Whoops. Anyway, so you will place your base right here and that's also going to allow you to buff all of these structures over here. All of your gas traps in your main funnel over here will become a lot stronger as well as all of the funnels that are going on underneath as well will also be made stronger as well. Okay, so um, over here we have this wall, we have the um, base location and then over here we do have a wall over here that is uh, made into a window just so that it is a lot easier for players when they need to place their base. You can simply activate your base and place it from behind over here and then you can run right back to safety and then you can go ahead and chill out as well. Okay. So this basically does it for this upper area right here. Now, I do also uh, note that some people are saying that there's also another ultra rare spawn that happens over here as well. Um, for me, I personally have not seen this spawn happen ever. Alright, um, however, if you guys feel like there's a need for you to, you know, build over here, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. If you want to, you can always build another funnel over here, you know, kind of up to you, but I don't feel like I'm going to spend, you know, a whole bunch of tiles over here for after playing endurance modes hundreds of times over, you know, I have never actually seen a spawn happen over here. Alright, so I'm just going to, uh, you know, take a chance. <laughs> if I do ever get it over here, I'll just build on the fly and uh, just uh, build something, uh, you know, that uh, uh, deals with this spawn over here. If not, I'll just leave it blank. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of tiles over here to make uh, another funnel. All right. So anyway, this basically covers it for this upper area right here. All right. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, mention how we have this area here built. Okay, so regarding the wall off, this part over here, as I mentioned, was the rare spawn block off. Yes. So behind this rare spawn block off over here, we have mentioned all these tiles over here. Now, what exactly do we want to do on the sides over here? So this is where we have some steps, don't we? We have some stairs or a gradient slope over here. What we do in fact have is a wall. Wall wall we have tons of walls going off across over here in fact if we count we can count one two three and four walls across over here okay with four walls across over here up until this particular spot over here i have a wall flushed across to this side as well as a floor piece over here now you might be asking why allura do you have this wall piece this wall piece is actually more to do with this upper spawn over here it's more of an area to catch smashers that were being tossed down and i didn't want the smashers to end up in this little area here and punch into our walls okay so is it necessarily strictly to do with the Devil North? Not really, but uh, you know, it does coincide a little bit. So I'll just mention to you guys that we have two tiles over here as well as a catching wall over here to ensure that smashes do not end up where we don't want them. Alright, so anyway, back to the walling off as well. This area here is basically a blank tile. I do not even have a floor piece over here. It was not needed. We have a box over here. So put into perspective, point of reference, this is where we have the timeout room. Over here we have a, what do you call this, a open box. Open box with four walls right here. All right, so all of the husks as they come in from here, they're going to be entering this area here. So 
what exactly do we have going on? This over here, we do in fact have the floor launchers. These are all five impact um, floor launchers. Okay, so five impact floor launcher number one, five impact, uh, no, this is a four impact, sorry. This is a five impact floor launcher, five impact floor launcher. This one over here is going to be a three impact wall launcher. And this one also is also going to be a three impact wall launcher. Over here, we have a four impact floor launcher as well as a four impact floor launcher. Now, part of the reason why I have four impact floor launchers off to the side as well is that I basically noticed that whenever you are having five impact floor launchers being put as part of a sequence in the timeout rooms, they are not going to be very useful for you and they also tend to be on cooldown more often than not. So what I decided to do is to go ahead and sync up all of these wall launches to ensure that there is going to be much more uptime on these things over here, on these floor launches over here. So as the husks recover, or as they're in their staggering animation, they're going to get hit by the four impact floor launcher. And as they walk onto this tile, or if they just walk onto this tile over here, then they're going to be hit with the much harder hitting five impact floor launcher instead. All right, so five impact, five impact, four impact, four impact. Over here, I do believe these ones are actually three impact. It might be a three impact floor uh, wall launcher over here, three impact wall launcher. This one over here is actually going to be a four impact wall launcher, I think. The one, uh, the reason why I actually have a three impact over here is because we want to make sure that there is high consistency rate of pushing all of the regular husks across this side as soon as possible. This one over here is more of a bigger hitter, so we can have a four impact over here. And this one we have a five impact floor launcher right there. Okay. So moving on as well, we have another 5 impact floor launcher here and a 4 impact wall launcher over here. And after this tile as well, we also do have ourselves a, um, this one over here, if I'm not wrong, is also a 4 impact floor launcher as well. Okay, so we have a lot less 5 impact floor launchers, a lot more 4 impact uh, floor launchers because this area down here, as we notice, are going to be cycling a lot more. So this two area here are also going to be 4 impact floor launchers because if we do have any husks coming in from this side over here, all these are going to go off. And the general idea is that they are all going to hit those upturned tiles up there. And they're just going to be sent right back onto this area right here, where they're just going to be continually tossed into the sky. All right. So... Uh, moving on as well, this was the 4 impact. Over here we have a 5 impact floor launcher. And over here we have once again another 5 impact floor launcher. Alright, and up ahead over here, we do have one more tar pit. Uh, you guys can also put a 5 impact floor launcher here if you wish, but uh, this tar pit over here is more for consistency for anything that does manage to leak through. I wanted to make sure that they all got stuck on this tile so that the wall launcher can send them back out and across into this area here. And even if they don't, you can always bring out your rocket launcher and go ahead and send them back to where they came from. Yeah, to um, basically fire them either backwards over here or across this side over here. So let's go ahead and count uh, for your point of reference, how many floor launchers we have going. So we have floor launcher number one, two, three, four. All right, there are a total of four floor launchers right here. Okay, five impact. This one over here is also five impact, five impact, five impact. So on the main artery over here, we have a whole bunch of five impact floor launchers. Over here, we have four impact floor launchers, four impact, four impact. This one over here is also a four impact, four impact, four impact. So that way, it's going to be a lot easier for you guys to actually remember. Right lane, five impact, left lane, four impact. Okay. If you guys can't afford 4 impact floor launchers, just put down 5 impact floor launchers and you'll be perfectly fine as well. Not that big of a deal. Okay, so over here we have 3 impact, 4 impact, 4 impact. Alright, this one over here, 4 impact, and this one over here I do believe is also another uh, 3 impact floor uh, wall launcher. The reason why this is a 3 is because this one over here is a 4. You want to always make sure that your uh, floor and wall launchers are staggered. That way, you know, you don't overlap each other. Okay, so this basically covers it. This entire area here, this is um, 
a uh, reason, the reason for this entire concept as well, I would like to also uh, credit, I think it was a Kirby Nyan or Vocaloid Nyan, some of you guys who actually do re uh, recognize, he is also on the, um, on the reddits quite often as well, so you could actually check out Vocaloid Nyan or a Kirby Nyan on the reddits. Okay, so anyway, um, conceptually, this particular area right here is more of a marriage of many different builds, okay? So this area here is the area where the smashes or all the husks are getting tossed up upon, right? And as mentioned, they will walk through this area here and this entire bridge area here. Now, this bridge area is not just for husks that get sent up onto this portion over here. We are going to now mention how the scuff puff is no longer going to be as scuffed as it used to be. Alright, so let me go ahead and get into that right now. So this area over here is what we would like to call the scuffed puff. Yeah, this is the scuff steps of the Devil North. This is part of the reason why Devil North is so incredibly annoying to build. But anyway, let's get right into it. So we have our gas traps, two rows of gas trap, gas trap, gas trap, gas trap, gas trap, okay? And then this part over here forms our main funnel. So what exactly do we have going? So this area down here, I like to reference Underwater Smurf. For those of you who do not know, Underwater Smurf is a fellow guild member who is also um, managing to clear four player solo challenge. In fact, did it... Um, um, before uh, I did some a uh, little bit uh, jelly of that, you know, but regardless, it's uh, it's good to be having some excellent competition around for people who are actually, you know, are really, really invested into doing these kinds of challenges as well as making some excellent funnels. Anyway, we have um, over here two wall dynamos and a wall dart over here. Now, you guys can also choose to put wall darts over here as well. It is your preference. Uh, part of the reason why I was understanding um, the reason when uh, Smurf was actually explaining to me why he was doing this over here is not so much for the damage against the fire elemental husks on wave 24, but it is more to do with the staggering of the... Uh, propanes as well. They do 100% damage versus propanes and that little bit of impact damage as well will also slowly chip away onto the impact guard of some of your husks. So if you're talking about hustlings, if we're talking about regular husks, these um, little dynamos over here are basically going to be able to gather you some time. So one of the things that I was also trying to experiment with was the Broadsides. Now, why do we not use broadsides over here? Okay, so from what I was being um, um, observed as well, and people also sharing me their thoughts about why they don't use broadsides over there, is partly because when you use broadsides over here, yes, they do a lot more damage. Yes, they are a lot more consistent. However, I've also noticed for myself, when we use broadsides or when we use wall lights as well, there is a much higher likelihood that husks, when they get staggered by these particular kinds of traps, are actually going to end up further left. They are going to be ending up from this tiles over here. They're going to be ending up much, much tighter across this area here, sometimes to the point where the hit gets glitched through the floors. Now, what happens when husks get stuck, you might ask me. Like, let's say, for example, I'm a husk and I see this gas tank in front of me. I'm stuck with my head inside this wall over here. Yes, you guessed it right, chat. They actually start to get pissed off and start punching on these floor pieces. Do you want has to be punching these floor pieces? No, you definitely do not. So that's part and parcel of the reason why we have kept this part, you know, a lot more simple and just use a couple of dynamos over here. These are the rare instance where we actually have dynamos in our base. As always, um, recommendation-wise, if you really do not like wall dynamos, you can also just go ahead and put some wall darts as well. Also okay. All right, so... We do have our wooden floor spikes as well. Wooden floor spikes number one, wooden floor spikes number two. And we have a tar pit over here. Tar pit basically to stick whatever husks that do enter over here. And this wall launcher is going to send them back out as well. All right, so 
Dynamo Dynamo, slowing flight, slowing spikes, darts as well as a tar pit and wall launcher. Accompanying gas traps, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. A two by three area of gas traps over here. Okay. So, um, whew, uh, what else do we want to talk about? Yes, we do have a tar pit over here. And on this side over here, what else do we have? I, in fact, have a slowing floor spike right here. You can't really quite see it, but right next to this tar pit, I have a slowing floor spike. Now, the reason why we have a slowing floor spike, and some of you guys might also be wondering, Alua, how you place all of these? I think a lot of people have been asking this question. I keep referring them to the old videos, you know, but um, some of these are a little bit more uh, 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 nifty or uh, fiddly to do. So let me just go ahead and show you guys right now how you do it. Okay, so first and foremost, you want to make sure that you have a triangle piece right here. Make sure you have a triangle piece of wall over here. All right, and then let me go ahead and uh, plant the floor launchers over here. So I'm going to remove this. I'm also going to remove this just for your viewing pleasure on how to get it done. All right. So the floor launcher over here is a lot more simple. You just go ahead and equip your floor launcher. I'm going to use triple impact floor launcher for this one. Also make sure that you are going to be using metal to be building. All right, so triple impact. See, right here, you make this triangle piece over here, you stand right here, and then you just aim your cursor right here, and then place it. Easy peasy. Now, this little area down here, right? Oh, how do you get this done? So annoying. How? See, I'm equipping my trap. I can't seem to place it either. Why? Well, what you can do is to go ahead and place your floor piece. Equip your floor piece first. So you can place the floor piece first and then afterwards go ahead and place your trap on top, see? Trap. Done. Alright. So for those of you who have been asking, this is basically your step-by-step -step on how to place these traps over here. Alright. So let's get back into the explanation. So uh, over here we have our 2 by 3 of uh, gas traps up there. Okay, we have our slowing floor spikes over here and we have our floor launcher over here with triple impact. Now, previously I was experimenting with some other traps as well. I did actually have a tar pit over here. However, I found out or I figured out that it doesn't really nearly do nearly as much good as a slowing floor spike. Now, why? Part of the reason for that is because with the slowing floor spikes over here, what this allows me to do is that when the husks come through on this side over here, yes, they get stuck and the wall launcher does, does go off. If they don't get hit by this floor launch, uh, wall launcher over here, they're going to walk onto these slowing floor spikes over here and they're going to get slowed. And when they get slowed, it is going to be much easier for the floor launchers over here to catch more of them. Imagine if you had a husk, you know, that uh, was uh, walking over here and this is off cooldown. And then uh, as they are triggering it, you know, sometimes it is going to fly. If you have husks being slowed down, you may not just get hit on one husk. You might actually catch more of them because the first one that's four running is going to be, you know, still on this tile. And they are going to be catching more husks over here. So I just prefer having a slowing floor spike here instead. Just so that when the husks walk from this area down here onto our floor launches, they are actually going to be slowed and it's going to allow the floor launches to do their work much easier. All right, much, much more easily. All right, so slowing floor spike number one, uh, floor launcher with triple impact number one, floor impact number two, and floor impact number three. Okay, so uh, we have all of these uh, floor launchers over here, and the main reason why they exist is to simply toss us up onto this area right here. So if I'm not wrong, this first floor launcher over here is a triple impact. This one over here is in fact a four impact floor launcher. And this one is also going to be a four impact floor launcher. The reason for a faster firing floor launcher over here is because you want higher consistency to be pushing Hus up up here. As long as you get Hus up here, you win. Okay. In the event that you get smashes as well, you want stronger floor launchers. So this one is also a 5.6 reload because it is dub, uh, for impact, sending them up here as well. And the same thing over here for this floor launcher, they are also going to be 
sent up as well. So how exactly do they get sent up? Oh, Alua, I'm glad you asked. Because why? As you can see over here from this first floor launcher, we are counting tiles up. One tile, two tiles, and three tiles. We have three tiles up, and then from three tiles up, we now have one, two, and three. Exactly three of these upturned slant pieces, and that is going to allow the husk to be floating very nicely into the floor launcher area that we have prepared up here. Alright, so uh, this is um, the reason why, you know, if you have any of the husks coming through on this scarf path over here, you don't want them to just go straight into here. You actually want to push them into an area that is much, much stronger. And that's going to be this area right here with all the amazing floor launchers. Alright. So that basically uh, does it for this area right here, I think. We have the floor launcher, floor launcher, floor launcher, yep. So as this floor launcher is going to be turning across over here as well, um, this particular floor launcher right here is in fact going to be a 5 impact. Basically anything that doesn't have a ceiling up above it as well is probably going to be a 5 impact floor launcher as well. Okay, but I'm not going to cover too much on that part over there because that is going to be part of the so-called main funnel. Alright, so far we've covered the rare spawn, we've covered the side uh, scuffed uh, stair as well as the upper spawn. Now we're going to go ahead and head backwards. We're going to head backwards onto our main spawn right now. So back to where we have the hugs coming in from this side over here. We have spawns coming in and they are spawning in right here. Alright, so mm, as they are walking in over here, as we have noticed, this is going to be quite different from how we had our funnels previously. Previously, what we actually did have was a wall launcher over here with a wall launcher over here, a 2 by one setup. And then over here, we did in fact have a so-called timeout room. However, I've gone ahead and adapted, or it's a nice word for saying casually yoinked, um, Murph's uh, frontal uh, build over here in front of the um, Devil North. And what we actually have going on now is double broadsides. So first tile over here is going to be double broadsides with wooden floor spikes, gas trap as well. Same thing on this right side over here, slowing floor spikes, double broadsides as well as gas trap. Moving on to the second tile, this is the part where we basically have our wall launcher. Wall launcher off to the left and wall launcher off to the right as well with accompanying gas traps up above to match it. Okay. Slowing floor spikes as well as a dart trap over here. You really don't want to put a wall on a uh, wall broadside over here because this area here with the wall launcher and the wall launcher over here is in fact very crucial. You don't want your balls to be interrupting your wall launchers from getting their value because if this wall launcher is interrupted by a ball trap, you basically lose the value of sending the husk back out to whence they came. Same thing on this side over here, instead of having them to um, stagger on this spot, they are instead being sent to this area down here, which is much preferable to them just staggering over here and trying to move forwards again. Okay, so these are basically how the first four tiles, or the first 2x2 two two tile area, is being built for the Devil North main funnel. Alright, moving on to the third tile over here, we do also have another um, wall launcher. So as we mentioned, if otherwise stated all wall launchers are triple impact okay so all these are regular wall launchers we have a tar pit over here and we do also have a gas trap going on here another gas trap over here as this wall launcher does send them off to the right hand side all right this is a very important floor la uh, wall launcher because it essentially helps you split the husks yeah it splits the main husks into two separate portions so it makes it a lot easier for you to deal with the husk density. Alright, so you might be also wondering, Allura, why do you have this tile open here? I'd like to thank Secret Gamertag who was sending me some messages about this particular area here and I was thinking about it and thought about it and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. So why have we actually left this area here open? The reason for this is because husks hardly ever 
come to this area here. They don't ever walk here. If they are walking straight here, they're just going to continue straight. And if they do get launched by this wall launcher over here, they're going to get launched across and they're going to be over here. And as they come over here, they don't actually walk onto this tile. They will in fact try to walk onto this tile over here. So the amount of passing traffic over here are basically flying husks. Their feet don't actually touch the floor. And as a result, there's no real reason to be placing any tiles over here. Okay, however, why do we still have a gas trap? Because flying hus, while they are flying and triggering this gas trap, you know, as this wall launcher is sending more hus their way, this gas trap is still able to trigger and is spewing the gas. The hus is flying across, they're still going to get hit by it, and that still gives you value. So we are keeping the gas up there. Okay, so. Um, back to uh, this particular area here, this wall launcher is going to be sending them into this area here. We have retractable floor spikes, we have dart traps, as well as a broadside with the ball of uh, the balls coming out from here. I was calling it a ball trap and broadside. <laughs> anyway, cannonball trap. All right over here. Now, the reason why we are putting cannonball trap instead of a dart trap over here is because this one mostly only ever triggers if you have house entering and hitting this area here first, and that's going to set the broadside off. Okay, so not that big of a deal. And if they do recover after they are sent flying, they're going to walk onto this tile, and this is going to be met with a wall launcher, triple impact once again. Top it down below as well as a gas trap up above. Okay, they're gonna get stuck over here and they're gonna get sent right back. If they don't get sent back, however, then they are going to be walking across to this tile over here. Now, if they walk onto this tile over here, one of two things will happen. First and foremost, we do in fact have a triple impact floor launcher happening right here, all right, which will send them up above. Or actually, let me think about this. Is this a triple or is this a four impact? This is actually a four impact, isn't it? Triple, four impact. No, triple, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I myself can't even keep track of what floor launchers I'm using. Yes, this is a triple impact floor launcher because it is much preferable for me to be putting hearts up above than it is for me to be putting hearts into a timeout room. So yes, I want this to be much more uh, much more consistent in terms of sending more things up. So this one over here, as long as you get something up here, you win. Okay? And uh, if this one doesn't go off, then not too bad. You still have this 4 impact wall launcher over here that sends them into a timeout room. Right here. So retractables, broadsides left and right, gas trap up above as well as a dart trap. Alright, so that's a uh, timeout room right there. So, 3 impact, 4 impact. Alright, so what else do we have going on over here? This floor launcher over here is a 4 impact floor launcher. And this one over here is a 3 impact wall launcher. Now the reason why this is a 4 impact uh, floor launcher as well is because you want to have enough um, oomph, impact damage, to be sending the husk up above onto the platform over here. If you put a triple impact over here, you may not get enough husk velocity and they might end up, you know, getting stuck on this area here or they might just end up on this tile and then that will be bad news bears. You don't want that. So stronger floor launcher, four impact right here, triple impact wall launcher over here. So either of the two things will happen. As mentioned, if they do pass by this tile over here, then this one goes off and sends them up above or it sends them into this timeout room right here. So timeout room wise, what do we have? The standard, we have gas traps, one, two, we have our broadsides, left and right, retractables, dart traps. And then in between over here, we have placed a tar pit because if the husks are getting sent into this room over here, getting shredded by all the broadsides and the retractables and the gas, they will attempt to walk out. And as they attempt to walk out, they're going to get stuck for another three seconds over here. And as they get stuck for these three seconds over here, they're going to walk out one more time to this area right here, which is going to allow enough time for the wall launcher to cool down. Okay. And if the wall launcher cools down, if it manages to send them back in, fantastic. If not, then this floor launcher over here should send them to their demise because this floor launcher over here is a 5 impact floor launcher. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's uh, basically it. 3, 4, 
five. Okay, so just remember that. For this side over here, we have three impact, four impact, five impact floor launcher. Next to the three impact, we have a four impact. And next to the four impact, we have a three impact wall launcher right there. Okay. So uh, over here as well, we do have one of these little hidden floor launchers. This is a, uh, I believe this is a five impact floor launcher. And uh, this one over here is simply for the us that do get sent from up above as mentioned previously they were sent out into this area right here and if you do have them uh, sitting out and chilling out over here you might just uh, use a rocket launcher and fire them once and then as they try to walk up on this side over here this one should send them flying if this one doesn't send them flying then this one might send them flying as well if not you can just go ahead and just keep rotating them backwards over and over again with your rocket launcher and keeping them in that tile over there or you can send them over to this side over here as well because we also do have more floor launcher arena right there okay so um honestly speaking um if your zeniths are doing their jobs uh, there's really no reason why the Smasher would even leave this area or this area here in the first place. They really have no reason to. Okay, so we have covered that side path. Uh, we were not yet talking about this main area here, have we? Yes, okay, so getting back to this tile over here because we were talking about how the husk getting sent across to this side over here. Let's continue with this main portion here. Alright, so tar pit over here and as we walk across to this side over here, we have a 3 impact floor launcher. This is a 3 impact floor launcher, so yes, you might be guessing it. Off to its side over here, the wall launcher here is a 4 impact wall launcher. 4 impact wall launcher over here and this floor launcher off to this left side over here is a 4 impact floor launcher. So I have been watching and studying this particular sequence very very carefully and it was very very pleasing to me to take note that our husks and huskies when they are sent by this floor launcher over here they are sent very nicely onto this area right here. Plop right there and for the ones that do not actually get sent by this first floor launcher over here the husks not the huskies that get sent by this wall launcher over here they get sent and they are hitting this area here and for regular husks when they get sent onto this side over here this is a four impact floor launcher it launches them immediately even though that they are trying to recover from their staggering animation it sends them immediately up as well if it is a husky however they on the later wave might not be sent by this first one but as they walk onto the second one this second one is going to be able to send them upwards which is going to be fantastic all right so once again just to reiterate we have three impact floor launcher four impact wall launcher four impact floor launcher off to the side over there okay and then over here the next tile this is a four impact floor launcher and this one over here is a three impact wall launcher okay and then off to the side over here we have a four impact floor launcher as well all right with the same reasoning that if this floor launcher does not go off, this one does go off and this one is also going to be a 4 impact floor launcher and if it's a smasher, it's going to impact break them. If it's a regular husk, it's going to send them back up as well. Alright, so once again, remember the formula 3, 4, yes indeed, 5. Alright, 3, 4, 5 for the main artery right here. So this one over here is going to be a 5 impact floor launcher. And this one over here is also going to be a 5 impact floor launcher. So if in the event you have a smasher coming through, the area that you actually want to keep the husk controlled is going to be in this arena right here. Please, for the love of God, do not try to keep smashers or any husk really. You don't want a single husk to be in this area here. You please do not freeze them over here. If you freeze them over here, the entire build goes boom. Not my fault. 
it's your freezy boy's fault, okay? Do not clock the funnel over here. There's literally only one entrance here. If you clock this, you are dead. Okay, so from which point then, Allura, uh, you might ask, is going to be safe for us to be freezing? I would say this area here. All right, this entire area here. So I'm going to mark this area here. All across this area here is fine. Okay, you don't really want to freeze them in this area. But past this point over here is fine. As long as the husks have ways for them to move, you start freezing them over here. That's great. All right. Also, one more pro tip when coming to freezing hus as well. I would highly advise you guys to freeze hus who are in the staggering animation. What do I mean by that? So whenever you are seeing smashes coming by, right, this is more of an advanced level tactic. When you see a smasher coming in, all right, please take note of how many times the wall launchers have actually gotten hit on it. So let's just say it is a smasher and it is happening to be walking in and none of these wall launchers get it. All right, he walks here, yeah, da 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 da, walk, 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 and then just nice, no wall launcher hits him. And then this wall launcher hits him and this wall launch, uh, floor launcher hits him and he does not fly. And he's like, oh no, what are we gonna do? You know, is he gonna come to us? Fret not, because if that smasher is getting hit by both of these ones, if he's gonna come over here, He's going to get hit by this or this, all right, and that's going to send him flying. Now, when the smasher is flying and then it is landing on the ground and it is now having the so-called staggering animation, that is an opportune time for you to activate your freeze boys and you guys will be like, hey, smasher is now being staggered, let's go ahead and freeze them. Why is this good time? Because when you freeze the smasher, that basically allows the floor launcher that it is under to reload and get it hit again. So that if you continually freeze them up until the point where the floor launcher gets hit again, right, you might actually, when they unfreeze, then allow the uh, effect of the floor launcher to send them back up. And if they're getting sent up, you win. All right, it's that easy. So. As long as you keep your freeze boys up here, freeze everything in this area here, nothing comes up here, you are golden. All right. So the way I would, um, what do you call that, manage your manpower, freeze boy number one stands somewhere here, freeze boy number two stands somewhere here, and freeze boy number three stands somewhere here. All right. And then you have your constructor probably uh, standing in the, standing, uh, standing somewhere behind over here. You know, and then your uh, your 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 constructor is just going to be uh, going to be doing uh, going to be doing this, yeah, and then you should be fine. All right, <laughs> okay. So um, let's uh, go ahead and continue then. All right. So this part over here is part of the main funnel as well. I've gone ahead and talked to you guys about all the different floor launchers. Um, I do have an additional dart trap over here, not strictly necessary. I mean, you can put another dart trap over here if you really wanted to, but it's not really that big of a deal. Um, actually, let me think about it. Did I have a gas? I think I actually did have something over there. I was uh, removing it by accident because I was trying to show you guys how to um, do the. Um, these uh, what do you call that under the tile um, traps okay so let me think anything else that we missed out on main path is done scuff path is done upper path is done side path is done as well um let's see checking the sides block off over there is done block off over here is done 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 whoa hey <laughs> oh wait no no not yet i was almost uh, happy for a second so yeah i forgot to talk about this area down here isn't it i keep talking about sending the huts up above over here but i completely neglected to mention how so um from this point on when you have the hus coming in from here okay you turn to your left you have the wall over here you're gonna count one tile two tiles three tiles, four tiles, four tiles upwards, all right, and then you're going to be having a two by three, okay, one, two, three, 
four, five, six, a two by three area of slanted tiles. And this basically allows this two by two area of, uh, not two by two area, sorry. Uh, it also includes uh, this, uh, so a two by three area of uh, floor launchers. You basically send all of your husks, smashers, huskies, propanes, whatever it is, you send them all up here. Okay, and uh, once they send up here, you are good to go. All right, so um, yeah, let's uh, think about it. Any more things that we need to mention? Oh, yes, so the reason why we have these uh, tiles over here, right? You might be thinking, why do we have these tiles over here? So in some of my earlier testing as well, there were some rare instances where I saw some of the smashers, when they ended up on the edge over here, some of them might just end up dropping down. And I really did not want that. So once I placed these uh, walls over here, I didn't see any more smashers dropping down. I didn't see any more phasing. They simply walked across the bridge over here like good boys and getting hit by this wall launcher, getting hit by this wall launcher, and then going over here and getting tons and tons of floor launcher value, and they don't ever make it into your base anymore once they get sent up there. Yeah. All right, so I think that's basically it, isn't it? Did I miss out on anything? Uh, this area here uh, that I mentioned as well, I think all of the uh, launchers have been talked about already, yeah. Okay, fantastic, right. So uh, once again, guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video. This has been a long one. It has been in depth, but you guys have asked for it. This is our current build as well. So what I've also been taking note as well was um, from this point onwards, I have not been very, uh, not really been keeping track of all the changes that I've been making. But from this point onwards, guys, okay, if I do make any changes, I will keep a so-called change log. So if this build changes in any slightest um, difference, yeah, if there's a couple of tiles that are being cut, if I'm adding any new uh, pathings, if I'm adding anything uh, you know drastically different as well, I will keep a change log, and then that way it'll be able to uh, you know note how far of a um, how far of a departure it is from the latest update video um, build. All right. So uh, yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you guys are also, uh, you know, enjoying yourselves and playing some Fortnite Killing Hus. And for those of you who are also doing the challenge runs as well, hope you guys are enjoying that. So with that, guys, hope you guys are keeping well and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.